Okay, welcome to week six, part three. We're going to take a look now at more details about slicing a two-dimensional ND array. And we're going to take a look at something called Boolean indexes that allow you to select certain parts or subparts of an ND array based on Boolean relationships like less than comparisons or greater than comparisons. So here's our AN array that I created by copying and pasting uh, from the notes in the previous part that we looked at. AN is a two-dimensional ND array. AN sub 2, whoops, sorry. Let's try this again. Okay, so AN sub 2 means to select row 2 from this ND array. AN sub 0 would be row, row sub 0, that is the first row. AN sub 1 is the second row. AN sub 2 is the third row, the sub 2 row. All right, and notice that whereas the two-dimensional array has two nested sets of square brackets, if I ask for just one row, I get just one set of square brackets. So this is now a one-dimensional array rather than a two-dimensional array. AN itself, you may remember if I looked at its shape, the shape is a tuple telling me the length of each dimension, and in this case there are three rows and five columns. But AN sub 2's shape, it is a tuple, but it's a tuple of just one value because this is a one-dimensional ND array and it has five elements in it. In fact, another attribute that I can look at for an ND array is NDIM. That's the number of dimensions. For AN, the number of dimensions is 2, but for AN sub 2, just one row of AN, the number of dimensions is just 1. Okay, AN sub 2 is a row. AN sub 2 sub 1 is one element from that row. AN sub 2 sub 1 currently contains 6.7. Now, I can change that item, that item within the ND array, by assigning a different value to that cell. Now, AN sub 2 will show that I've got a 1.0 in that cell. And in fact, if I look at the entire array, AN, I see that I have a 1.0 in that so, so, I mean, you would expect this. Um, nothing surprising going on here. I just wanted to demonstrate that this is true. Now, um, if you ask for one particular row, and then comma, and use a slice for columns, you will just get those certain columns. We did this before, colon 3. So an sub 2, and then for columns, colon 3 means give me columns sub 0, 1, and 2, up to but not including columns sub 3. And so now I get just a portion of that last row. If I want all of the columns, then I can use a colon, which is equivalent to saying an sub 2. And then because there are five columns, I could say 0 colon 5, meaning starting from, colon, starting from column sub 0 up to but not including column sub 5. All right, and so this is also a one-dimensional ND array. The number of dimensions is one. 
and the shape is five comma. So there are five items within that one-dimensional ND array. In this examples here on slide four, instead of just saying a n sub two to get one row, I'm asking for a slice of rows, a n sub two colon. Now this may seem a little odd because a n is an array of three rows and five columns. a n sub two is the final row. So if I ask for all of the rows starting from row sub 2, I'm only going to get row sub 2, right? However, notice that because I asked for a slice of rows, this is treated as a two-dimensional ND array, even though it only has one row in it. All right, so an sub 2 dot endim is one dimensional with a shape of five for five, five items in the row but a n sub two colon this is a slice of rows and its dimension is two if i ask for a n sub two colon's shape i get told there's one row having five columns. So this is a one by five, two dimensional ND array. And this in turn is equivalent to saying an sub two colon comma colon. All right, if you want all of the columns, you can just not specify columns and you'll get all of the columns. There we are. Now, if in the row position you just say colon, and let me ask for everything up to but not including column two. Actually, let's display a n again. It's kind of gone off top of our screen. So let's remind ourselves that a n contains uh, this matrix. Now I don't know why this is interesting. In my in my slides, for some reason, I have accidentally used a three instead of a n, but uh, a n is correct. So a n sub colon comma colon two. This colon here means all rows. It's the same as if I had said a n sub zero colon three. And then columns colon two. And it means give me everything from row sub zero up to but not including row sub three. And for columns, give me everything up to but not including column sub two. So I will get this, these, these items, and these items, and these items. In other words, I'm going to get a three by two array. Okay, a n sub colon comma colon two dot end m is going to be two dimensional. a n sub colon comma colon two dot shape is going to be three by two. All right, so that's also a two dimensional array. Now, <clears throat> This next example on slide six may look a little bit artificial. What we're doing is we're accessing an individual item within the array a n, but we're accessing that as a scalar value and as a one-dimensional array and as a two-dimensional array. Okay, so what we're interested in is this value here. Uh, right in the middle of the array. Let's redisplay a n. Here's the value that we want. Now that is a n sub. Let's see. The first row is row zero. The second row is row one. So a n sub one for the row. 
And in terms of columns, 0, 1, 2, so 2 for the column. Here is a scalar value, it's just a number. And if I try to do something like this, an sub 1, comma 2, comma n dim, I'm going to get yelled at. Oh, ha, 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 No, I forgot. Okay, cool. <laughs> a scalar is zero dimensional. Good. <laughs> so it does work. But the shape, I'm thinking. Cool. Okay, so the shape is an empty tuple. That's interesting. I wonder if I ask. Well, no, it's. Okay, so this is a piece of an ND array. If I ask for 5.ndim, then I do just get yelled at. All right. So as a one as a scalar value, a n sub one comma two is seven point eight zero nine. Now, if I say a n sub one colon two comma two, this is a slice of rows. But the slice is only one row thick, because I'm saying, give me all of the rows from row sub 1 up to, but not including, row sub 2. So it is a slice of rows, but it's a slice that only includes this row. And then I'm asking for the sub 2 item within that slice. Now. It may seem like we should just get the same value back, but what we get actually is a one-dimensional array containing that value. Because we've asked for a slice of rows and a single column within that slice of rows, so we get that column value within this slice of rows. And that, if we look at the shape, is a one-dimensional array with one column. Uh, and sub one colon two comma two dot end m is going to be one. We can use the same trick in the column space as well, in the column direction. So I here I'm asking for a slice consisting of one row. I can also ask for a slice of columns consisting of just one column. And now I have created a two-dimensional array. Notice it's got two sets of square brackets around it. But it's a two-dimensional array consisting of one row with one column. Okay? And if I ask for the uh, end dim, I get told that it's two-dimensional, and if I ask for the shape, I'm going to get told that the shape of this two-dimensional array is one by one. Why in the world should you care? Well, if you look at documentations for a documentation for functions, to which you can pass an ND array, you may discover that the function requires you to pass a two-dimensional ND array as an argument. But if you only have one value, how can you pass that one value as a two-dimensional ND array? And here is the, the trick. You ask for a slice of rows and a slice of columns in which the slice of rows is just one row and the slice of columns is just one column. And magically now you have a two-dimensional array. And so that will make the function that you're trying to pass that value into be, be happy with your uh, dimensionality. All right, so that's, uh, that's plenty of fun and games with uh, slicing. We know how to slice in the row direction we know how to slice in the column direction, and we know how to combine those to do slicing in both the row and the column direction uh, in the same statement. Sometimes we want to use a Boolean relationship to identify just certain items or certain rows or certain columns within 
the ND array. Let me show you an example of using a Boolean index to access just certain rows from an ND array. Here's my ND array with three rows and four, uh, five columns. B rows is going to be a list of Booleans. Now, I, I know that looks like browse, but I promise it's it's B rows, it's Boolean rows. <laughs> okay, and when I now say AN sub B rows, well, after you've typed the square bracket after AN, the first dimension indicates rows. And so as my first dimension, I'm using Boolean values now instead of a slice of rows. And the reason that I'm using Boolean indexes is because I want row sub 0 and I want row sub 2, but I don't want row sub 1. So this Boolean index is going to get me a portion, not a slice, a portion of the AN array containing row sub 0 and row sub 2, but not row sub 1. Okay, so one use of a Boolean index is exactly like this, to allow you to select certain rows that are not necessarily sequential, or you can also select certain columns that are not necessarily sequential by using a Boolean index. Let me uh, illustrate the idea of accessing certain columns. It's very similar. So let me say B calls is, now there are five columns, remember, so let me say true, true, false, false, true, as an example. So this is B calls. I want columns 0, 1, but not columns 2 or 3, and I want column 4, column sub 4. So I say A, N. Now, for the rows, I want all the rows, so I'm going to use slice notation for the rows. But then I only want certain columns specified by this Boolean index. And as you can see, I get column sub 0 and column sub 1, and also column sub 4, but not columns sub 2 and sub 3. All right? So that's the idea of a Boolean index. It allows you to, uh, to select by true-false values which rows and or columns you want. Okay. So here's B rows again. Uh, let me display A N. There's A N. And here's B rows again. True, false, true. And if I say A N sub B rows, now I'm indexing just certain rows and that is a view on the underlying ND array, just like using a slice gives you a view on the underlying ND array. So if I multiply that view by minus one, what will happen here is that, uh, all right, so for B rows, well, I have it right here. So for B rows, I want I'm, I want to select row sub zero, not row sub one, and I want to select row sub two. So the upshot is going to be that all of the items in row sub zero are going to be multiplied by minus one. Likewise, all of the rows in all of the <laughs> I'll get this right. All of the items in row sub two are going to be multiplied by minus one. But row sub 1 is going to be unaffected. All right, so if we compare the original AN that we had with the AN that we have now following this multiplication, you'll see that the initial row and the final row are the negatives of what they originally were. But the middle row, row sub 1, is unaffected. <clears throat> now, you can use uh, 
equality, inequality, relational uh, identity and and membership operators to create a Boolean index from uh, an ND array. So here's my ND array AN, and I can do something like this. I can say AN uh, greater than seven. What I will get from that comparison, each item in AN is gonna be compared to see whether it's greater than seven. If it is greater than seven, such as this number and this number, I'm going to get a true in the cell of my Boolean result uh, in those cases. But for all the other ones that are not greater than seven, I will get false. So notice that this value in row sub one, column sub zero is true. And this value in row sub one, column sub two is true. All the others are false. Here we're doing a little bit less restrictive of a comparison, a n greater than three. And I've also got uh, this value 6.7 is greater than three. So this one is gonna give me true, true, true for the first three columns in row sub one. Whoops, sorry. Click the wrong window, okay. Now, if I then take that Boolean index and use that as an index into the array itself, I will get a view on the items where the Boolean relationship is true. So I'm going to get a view that just consists of these three items and if I say something like gets three, then these three items are going to be changed to three, all right? So these three values here in AN will be changed to three. And here we are. Whoops, wrong, wrong ones. <laughs> here we are down here. So uh, these three items within this two-dimensional array have been changed to three. Okay, so we've now taken a look at slicing in the row direction and the column direction and both. We've also taken a look at using Boolean indexes to select rows or columns that are not necessarily sequential uh, and also rows, rows and or columns based on numerical relationships greater than, less than, equal to, what have you. And this lab will give you some practice with those things.